Hello, I'm Luke Ross for MixingLight.com and welcome to the fourth insight in this Baselight Beginner video series. So in this insight, we're going to have another look at the Setups Editor. We're going to create a new scene or timeline and we're going to delve through all of the essential settings that you need to set up when you create a new scene and are preparing it for yourself as a colorist or preparing it for an external colorist as sort of a DI assistant. So if we bring our attention to the top left hand side of the GUI, click the base light and click the setups, you can see that we can access our setups editor natively within base light. You can see that we have our Luke's Mac setup that we created earlier and that's uh, active with the green tick. And you can see that our primary video output is correct like we checked last time and our viewing color space has been set to the viewing color space of my monitor. So in this case, I'm working on an iMac uh, which has a P3 color space. So I've set that to 2.2 gamma P3. So jumping from our display to our new scenes tab, uh, we're going to scroll down. Uh, in our second insight, we set our container directory to our desktop, to Baselight Media. So we're going to leave this here. That's fine for now. Um, and we're going to jump up to the format and color subpanel. Whenever we create a new scene, these will be the default settings for that new scene. So it can be really time efficient to set the settings that you use all the time uh, in this new scenes tab in the format that you use the most. So I'm going to leave my working format as 1920 by 1080 but I might set my working frame rate as 24p as the footage that I'm gonna be working on in this series is 24 frames per second. I'm also gonna change the working color space from Filmlight's default T-Log e-gamut to Aces CCT AP1. This is the color space that I prefer to grade in within Baselight, so I'm gonna leave that there for now. Also, and we'll talk a little bit more about this soon, um, I'm gonna change the display rendering transform or DRT to an ASUS flavor. So I'm gonna hit RRT 1.1 plus for now, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. So that's actually all I'm gonna change within the format and color sub panel. Just a quick note here as well, if I was working in a 24 frames per second setup, and then I open up and start working in a 30 frames per second scene, that can cause a bit of issues. So it can cause things like audio stutter, and uh, playback stutter. So make sure that when you're setting up your setups, uh, you've selected a frame rate that's appropriate to your project. For now, I'm just gonna hit Luke's Mac and hit save and exit the setups editor. Just a final note, when you make changes within the Baselight setups editor, so not the standalone program, but within Baselight like we just did, uh, you'll need to restart Baselight for those changes to take effect. Cool, so let's go ahead and create a brand new scene. So we're gonna go up to the views menu and hit job manager. So you can see, navigating from left to right, we're on my local base light uh, within our mixing light tutorials job. So we're gonna create a new scene within that. So I'm gonna hit the cog and hit new scene. So I'll call this scene for scene setups. Um, I'm not gonna select a scene template for now and I'm gonna keep the working format as 1920 by 1080. Your working format should reflect your output deliverables. So for example, say I'm grading this short film that is uh, solely for an online distribution. It's just gonna go on YouTube at 1920 by 1080. That's what I wanna set my working format as. Even if the short film has you know, UHD clips or 4K or 6K clips, my working format should be my output deliverable. Going down the list, uh, we're gonna make sure our working frame rate is set to 24p um, as well. Bear in mind that you cannot change this once you've set up your scene. So uh, make sure you select this very carefully um, at the beginning. And lastly, I'm happy with my working color space being Asus CCT AP1. Um, as well, a quick note here, uh, definitely try and avoid the display referred color spaces here. Uh, you want to pick a scene referred color space to ensure that you have a large working color space. And again, my preference is AP1, so we'll leave that there and hit OK. Cool, we've created our first scene. Gonna go ahead and close the job manager, go to our views, and just change that to workspace two, which is our default workspace we created in the last insight. So we've changed our setups, we've opened our first scene, what next? Well, the first thing we do is we go to the views menu and we open up our scene settings. Now this can be toggled open and shut with Control S. That's Control S. There are a few things I wanna tick off on this list. The first thing we wanna look at as a colorist or a DI assistant setting up the scene is we wanna make sure that our starting time code is correct. 
For example, say we're conforming uh, the first reel of a feature film. The first thing to do um, is to bring in your offline reference media and see what the starting time code is. For example, something quite common would be um, 095952, okay, which gives you an eight second count in towards 10 hour time code. But just make sure that the starting time code lines up uh, with whatever time code your offline reference material starts at. It'll save everyone a lot of headaches further down the line. We're gonna ignore everything else in the general tab for now, and we're gonna to jump to the format and color tab. So uh, you can see here, we've got our working format and our working frame rate is grayed out because we cannot change that after we create the scene. So we're gonna go down to our color panel and we're gonna talk a little bit about DRTs. So we mentioned DRTs when we were tweaking our setups editor before. Well, what are DRTs? In Baselight's color management, um, a DRT can be thought of as a tone curve. Okay, so when you're grading and when you output your image, this tone curve will be applied throughout that process. So the easiest way that I like to explain it is get a timeline open, uh, get some media on it, apply some grades, change your DRTs using the options below here and see what they do to your image. I personally like to use this Asus RRT 1.1 Plus when working in ASUS, so I'm gonna set this here for now. Just know if you're a DI assistant, the colorist might have a strong opinion of what their DIT is. Um, so just make sure to check that with them before you get going and before they start grading. But if you're the colorist, have a play, see what you like. Just a note as well, there is a lot more advanced color space settings, which is beyond the scope of these tutorials, uh, but don't worry about them. Just know that they live in this panel. Jumping across to our scene audio tab, this is where we can link audio to our scene if there's no audio in the media that we're working with in the timeline. So if we go and click this drop down, you can see that we can browse for a audio file. We can offset this file and we can adjust the volume here. Um, also, if you have stems, if you have a left or right audio stem, you can go ahead and select those individual stems uh, using this type. But for now, we'll go ahead and set that back to none. And finally, in the scene settings, we're gonna to jump to the container and versioning tab. And we're gonna have a look at this image container sub panel. So what is the image container or scene container? So Baselight uses the image container as the root for all of the media file paths within the scene. And as you can see, we actually set this in our setups editor and we specified the default container to be this Baselight media folder on the desktop. So let's see what that looks like when we start importing files, especially when we start importing files that aren't within this scene container. We're gonna go ahead and close the scene settings and open up the Flux browser. So you can see that I've navigated through an external RAID, which is connected to my Mac called NLO Data, and I've navigated to a set of media clips. Now, when I go ahead and try to insert a random clip, the first thing it's gonna ask me is it's gonna say, oh, this movie's not within the scene's current container, which is that default location that we set on my desktop. Do you wanna change it to this new volume? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit change container and we'll have a look at what that does to the scene settings and what that looks like on the parameters view as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click change container and I'm gonna close flux manage. So we've successfully imported a clip and I'm gonna go ahead and open up scene settings again. Scene settings. And you can see in our container and versioning tab, our default image container or scene container is now volumes in a low data. So it's changed the default image container to our RAID. The one thing I wanna draw your attention to, if we look up to the parameters view up the top left, uh, you can see that we've got this percent %C. Now what is this percent %C? Well, the percent %C is the base light expression that represents our image container. So this percent %C represents this exact string of text here. In fact, what I could do is I could go ahead and just replace percent %C with NLO data, and that would work. Our media would remain online. I'm gonna go ahead and just change that back to percent %C and hit enter. So now that we've imported media that is linked in this way to our image container, what happens if we change our image container? Well, let's go ahead and browse and change it to a random folder here and hit OK. And look at that, our clip has gone offline. If you look up in the parameters view, 
our file path hasn't actually changed. It's exactly the same. Uh, but because we've changed the container, which is represented by this expression, Baselight can no longer see this file. And again, just to make it crystal clear, if I go ahead and replace this percent %c with this new file path, that's what Baselight's trying to look for. It's trying to look for this file in the users folder because that's what we've changed our image container to. So very bad, that file path doesn't exist, so we're seeing offline media. So we're gonna go ahead and change that back to percent %c. And we're gonna go ahead and change our image container back to volumes NLO data, which is the RAID that contains our media, and hit OK. And you can see our media has sprung back to life. At this level, at this stage, uh, just make sure that your scene container is set uh, to the volume where your media will be stored for your project. Okay, and that covers all of the initial setup that you want to do when you open up your first scene. So let's just recap very quickly. So up here in the Baselight Setups Editor, we're just going to make sure that we have an active setup uh, that reflects our frame rate of our project with the correct primary output settings, display settings, and optionally uh, some format and color tweaks that makes creating new scenes easier uh, with less room for error. Then jumping to our scene settings with Control S, we're gonna make sure that our time code is set correctly. Our working color space and our DRT have been set to the colorist's preference. Audio has been brought into the scene if there's audio to bring in. And that our image container or scene container has been set to the default volume of where our media is gonna be stored for this project. Thanks guys for watching. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them below in the comments and I'll catch you in the next insight. For MixingLight.com, I'm Luke Ross.